Hello, Glenn here from digitalphotographycourses.co.uk. Welcome to this new session in looking at different methods of mounting the move, shoot, move rotator to a tripod. In previous episodes, what we've done is we looked at using a ball head, we've looked at using a pan and tilt head, a tilting head for a monopod, and also a wedge. Now, um, move, shoot, move people do make their own wedge. I haven't got one, so, uh, you know, but this is actually a Skywatcher wedge that I use for if I'm using bigger and longer lenses. So, uh, what we're going to do today is looking at the uh, Allen Wallace Z bracket, uh, which is this little chap here. Now, um, first of all, I have to say, and uh, let me just start by saying that I purchased this. Um, nobody sent this to me, I paid for it out of my own money, nobody's asked me to sort of uh, say nice things about it, but I do have to say, it is beautifully made. It really, really is a smashing piece of engineering. I've looked at Z brackets in the past, and usually I've found that they tend to be sort of friction driven, or you need an Allen key or something to lock them off, and they're not that convenient. This one is absolutely great. We have these thumb locks, and they lock, and once they lock into position, They are super sturdy, yeah, they really are very nice. So you have to give it a good old tighten, but you, you know, that's really giving it some pressure. So when I saw these on the website, they were always kind of looking being used on top of a ball head or to kind of, or just underneath the ball head to give you extra flexibility. And it occurred to me that I wondered if we could, I could use this as a replacement for something like this as an alt azimuth mount. So that's why I ordered it initially, and I uh, had a pre-order. Um, so I've been testing it out, and I'm extremely pleased with the results I've been getting. So, but the nice benefit of this is what we can actually do is save a lot of space and save some money. So if we just remove our ball head, we can replace that ball head with the MSN. Now, that saves you the cost of buying a second ball head, but obviously you've got to the cost of buying the bracket instead. Uh, so, <clears throat> when we come to fit this to the tripod, you'll, most tripods have got a 3 8 inch uh, sort of uh, thread here, and the adapter, or the base here, has got an adapter in it. So the first thing we need to do is to remove that, and uh, so we can unscrew this so it'll fit. This obviously would fit a quarter inch screw if your tripod had that instead. But let me take that out and put that somewhere safe so you don't lose that. And so now I can fit this to here. There we go. And what you want to do is just make sure that this, uh, this sort of bolt here is nice and tight, otherwise you won't be able to screw it on tight. There we go. And then we can loosen this off to adjust it sort of for direction. Now, one thing that you can do here straight off the bat is you want to make sure it's level. Um, so to make sure it's level, we'll just loosen everything off. There we go. And look on the top here and we have a bubble level and uh, you just need to make sure that this is uh, sort of level which you can do by if you you could either use a leveling base I've actually got a leveling base or you could just adjust your legs slightly and get it level that way lovely good now another thing that we can do with this that is quite useful is if you grab your compass uh, so I've got a, a good old Boy Scout comfort here, and you go off and find north, what we can actually do is, if you just loosen these off, flip the top over, nice and flat, or a little bit flat, there we go, you can lay your compass over the top. Another little tip here is if you just kind of get these uh, pegs and get them upright, then you can use those as your guide. There we are. And then you can use this to point yourself north. And we're halfway to being set up 
obviously where I say north, if you're in the southern hemisphere that would be south. We're halfway set up and have got the direction already for our alignment. So you could do that in the daytime. If you are out at night time, then if you can see Polaris or you can, um, you know, if we're in the northern hemisphere, if you just tilt this up, you can pop behind here, look through this slot and use that little slot there as your guide and then at least you know that you've got the direction so you know that you've only got to go up and down to get your altitude. So the next thing then is we're going to mount the move shoot move onto the bracket. Now to do this you've got two choices. We can either mount it here at the base or we can mount it here. Keeping in mind if we do mount it here this is not going to fit this, this is a quarter inch, this is a three eighth inch, so you'll need to pop your adapter back in again. So let's get this fitted then. So what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to do it uh, in the sort of upright configuration. Now just keep in mind when you're screwing this on, kind of think where you're going to point it. So I basically need to be pointing this, um, I need to be kind of be pointing this in that line there kind of thing. Okay, so th for, for this, for today, this is north, it is actually north. Um, so we'd need to make sure that the thread is actually pointing this way. So if we do this, now you might find it easier to let gravity help you. A little bonus tip here for you is when you screw this on, don't screw it on right at the very end. Because if you do, when you come back, what you will find and if I just loosen this off, you can see, there you go. What you'll find is this will hit the base as you're trying to adjust, okay? So what you want to do is just bring it back. And what I've actually done here is I've actually just drawn a pencil mark and you want to just bring that back to around about halfway and then lock it off. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to clear this switch. So, or this lever. So, as so long as you can sort of get that lever done, you'll be absolutely fine. There we go. And get that nicely locked off. There we go. You can use a coin in there if you want to. There we are. So, we've already got our direction. We set that up earlier. So, all we need to do now is we need to get this pointing up at Polaris. Okay. So, let me just lock the direction off. Go back to where we were. Now, what you could do here, obviously, uh, you just what I suggest you do is you want to get these uh, lockings. You can lock this one off completely, but you want to get this sort of tension tight so that you can move it, but it's not locked. Okay, so let me just spin that round for you, so you can see what we're talking about. Yep. So you want to get these guys here sort of tension tight, so you could do that, right? Good. So you can now, if you want to, you could use um, an app on your phone, and I'll post a link to this below. So you could use a inclinometer app or something like that. Uh, uh, so as you do this, you could use that to find your 52 degrees. We're lined up for uh, to, towards the Polaris. So all we'd need to do now is fine-tune everything using the laser or the polar scope. So if we pop the laser or the polar scope on and uh, again just keep this slightly loose just um, so we can adjust these. I wish this bottom bit was very very slightly longer so that it didn't catch just here. So you know maybe that's an idea for a future update uh, and also possibly I think there's also potential for a model that's a bit wider, uh, that clears the sides of this. It just gives you that little bit of freedom, um, you know, to kind of not keep catching things. So what we need to do now then is we would have the laser, we'd get sort of lined up, so we'd just loosen this off very slightly. There we go. And we do any fine tuning with the laser. Lock that off. Now you can actually pull these guys out but I have to say, this is where, there you go, it's a little bit easier just to do it that way. It's going to keep the same angle, and then obviously what you do next 
is you would just come up and down. And again, just keep this slightly taunt, get your laser lined up and lock it off. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop on the ball head. You could have done this previously and uh, if you wanted to, is once the ball head's on, you've run out of space for your laser, but I'm okay, I'm getting away with that. Here we go. So make sure that's nice and snug. Good. There we go. And obviously this line here is pointing to the north or south celestial pole. So there we go. So we're getting there nicely. Once you've got that on, we can pop our camera on. So let me just pop this off. So this is a, a Nikon D750 with a 20 millimeter lens. So um, you're probably already aware that the MSN really is intended for wide angle lenses uh, and lenses up to about 135. It's not really intended for big heavy lenses. Okay, so we can pop this on here, lock it into place and rotate that to where our target is. We have the MSN facing towards the North or South Celestial Pole, and we have our camera facing towards whichever target uh, we choose. This time of year in the UK, it's mainly things like Orion and the Orion Nebula, um, so it's over in that direction just there. And it's a good idea at this point just to lock everything off, and again, just switch the laser on, just have a quick peek, make sure that sort of you've not knocked everything off by moving it. And there we have a lovely compact lightweight setup using the Alan Wallace Z bracket, or the MSM Z bracket, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can see there that it's certainly pretty stable. That is pretty good, very impressed. So let's look at it in its second configuration. And what we're going to do now is we're going to mount it using this hole here. Now, of course, this will not fit this. So we need our adapter again. So we'll pop the adapter back in. So lock that nicely in place. And now again, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to fit this on in this direction. So what you again you need to think about is think about where you want it pointed. So for instance, this way, if I do this, it's going to be pointing in that direction. Now I could turn the whole thing round, but because I've got the Z bracket, and if you had the V bracket, you would probably need to do that. But because this is the Z bracket, what I can actually do is just tilt it this way. There you go. Great stuff. So again, what we'll do is we'll flip it over and screw this on. And just like before, what you want to do is just make sure that this has got enough freedom here so that you can get to these locking uh, nuts. So if we just bring it back, there we go. So we've got plenty of space to adjust that. Excellent. And so the trick is when it's mounted, you should be able to see the bubble level, which is good because we've been doing all this messing around. It's also not a bad idea just to do a quick check and make sure that the bubble level is still level. So um, we've already got our direction. You can use that method I showed you previously to get direction. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to tilt this forward. And uh, obviously we, we, as we've got direction, we just need to go up and down and we need to lock this into position. Now, if I just turn this round for you, you can see here what tends to happen, if you use it in this configuration, this low configuration, what tends to happen is this sort of tends to bang into the bottom of here. It's not the end of the world, you know, it's, it's easily fixable, um, but I did wonder if there was a, a sort of an opportunity there maybe to have uh, a Mark II, well not necessarily a Mark II version, but a slightly bigger version with the actual intention of using it as, um, you know, as a sort of base like this. That was the width of this, that was actually the width of the MSN, because if it was the width of this, then you'd be able to get to those bolts uh, pretty easy. Just an idea, you know, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, right, so we'll come back and have a look at this in a moment. 
So there you go folks, that's uh, sort of a couple of ways to set up the MSN and use it basically as a wedge, uh, but there is a bonus. Um, rather than having something, as I said before, this kind of size, obviously you'd be using the MSN one, um, the, what we can do is we can dismantle this. So just uh, give that, lock this off. So we'll flip this up, lock that off, unscrew it, there we go, like so, flatten it down, take off the ball head, there we go. pop that back on there for your normal photography, obviously give that a good tighten, and then what we can do is if we take this, just loosen these off a fraction, we can undo the thread, drop this back, push that lever out of the way, there we go, drop this all the way back, lock it off, flatten it down, tuck the handles in, and then take in the nice little bag that you got with your MSN. We have a super portable and transportable move, shoot, move, complete with effective wedge. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. I hope that was a good session for you. Um, I say I'll leave links down below for uh, the various bits of kit. There will be affiliate links. So, you know, if you do click on those, I get a small kickback. It helps me a little bit. Um, so feel free to use those if you'd like to. So in conclusion, um, very nicely made product, really is beautifully engineered. Um, just a sort of couple of little issues, you know, that, uh, that I found that would make it, I think, even better um, if it was wider. So if it was the width of this, then these guys wouldn't get sort of uh, jumped. In fairness, you know, this is not what it was designed for. This is kind of a bonus. So, you know, you were doing something here. I was just thinking, you know, if it was wider, then you would have that sort of option, which would be kind of cool. Uh, maybe another thing that is, would be good. I love this. I think this is a great idea, this rotation and the scale. I think maybe I wondered if there was some method of putting um, a sort of scale on here so we could actually see what the angle was. That might make life good. It's quite small though, so I don't know if, if it would work. Um, and the other thing I did wonder about is if this was slightly um, deeper, the whole thing was slightly deeper, then maybe we could have a, a sort of a built-in compass here um, you know, sort of little Boy Scout compass, just to kind of give you a little bit of extra sort of for the direction and such like. So um, just those little things really. But as I said, absolutely first class product, not paid to say that, very, very pleased with it. Beautifully designed, beautifully made, very, very strong. And um, so there you go guys. So thank you very much indeed. I shall pop this back in its little bag and uh, thank you for your time. See you again soon.